What's going on guys? Orms Farm coming at you guys today with another video. Today's video I'm going to be talking about day 12 of Lions training camp. Yesterday's training camp. You guys know the drill, man. I'm on afternoon, so I'm going to have to do uh, like a day late on my reporting. Um, sorry about that, but it's just the way things are going. But thanks to the reports from guys like Jeremy Reisman, Max Damara, John Macaron, Michael Hara, Tim Twentyman, Jeff Risden, the gang. Um, if it wasn't for them, I couldn't get this out. Before we start, though, don't forget to um, subscribe at the bottom right, hit the notification bell, get all my videos. And don't forget to like and comment this, share it. Uh, let's talk about day 12, though. Uh, they got back to hitting yesterday, uh, tackling drills, some intense goal line drills, individual drills, team drills. Just a lot of um, lot of energy going on yesterday in uh, for day 12. Decker and Swift were back. Uh, undrafted free agent wide receiver Josh Johnson was also back, too, after missing uh, um, the day prior. Um, guys like Cephas, Melafonmu, um, Julian Aquara, Levi and Luzarike were all out yesterday. Uh, not good for those guys. I think Melafon who came back today, but I'll get back to that. Yeah, I'll get back to that tomorrow. Uh, Campbell saying that um, Julian Aquara and uh, Levi on Ruzarike's injuries might be another week or two before they're back. Um, he did say, though, that um, Levi and Ruzarike will not miss the Philadelphia Eagles game. So that's a good thing. Nothing on really the the Aquara uh, um, injury, but it sounds like it's a little more serious than it is not. Uh, Cephas was out there moving. He didn't obviously dress, but he's out there moving on the sidelines, light jogging, um, um, testing his hops, just, just testing out that foot, it seems like. Uh, so that's a really good sign. If it is a foot, I'm just completely guessing because it's not a knee. It doesn't seem to be an ankle. Uh, so maybe it's a foot, maybe it's a, maybe it's a quad. Who knows? But um, he's out there moving around. That's a good sign. Um, Trinity Benson was sidelined as well, but was moving around and uh, was working on the jugs machine. So good to see him out there getting something done with him uh, missing uh, drills. Uh, Goff, Goff was on again. Three completions over 30 plus yards, uh, hitting the usual suspects like DJ Chark and Amon Ross St. Brown um, in tight coverage too as well. So uh, Goff even playing with the media a little bit uh, yesterday after practice. Uh, they're asking about his uh, his completions downfield, throwing the ball downfield, and he was like, um, no, we don't do that here. This is a quote. No, we don't do that here. We don't throw it down the field at all. So, you know, having a little fun with the media because, you know, they've been on him. Um, fans, media, uh, a lot of people have been on Jared Goff for not throwing the ball downfield as much last year. It took a while for it to happen. It took about 10 weeks. And uh, there's a lot of things that go into that. We're not going to discuss, discuss that. I've discussed it uh, um, till I'm blue in the face. But we know well, there's a lot of reasons why that, ha that hasn't happened. But he's got guys he can throw the ball downfield now. DJ Chark, Alan Ross St. Brown getting better at it. And uh, guys like Trinity Benson um, and uh, Josh Reynolds. You know what I mean? So DJ Chark, I already said his name. But he's got guys. And then, you know, they drafted Jameson Williams for a reason. So when he gets going in the mix... Look out! Uh, I I think the comp the swagger's there with Goff. I'm starting to get a little bit more on board with him, um, like I've been saying in my other videos. So um, I'm going to temper my expectations a little bit with him. I'm all all for Goff succeeding here. I just still have just a little bit skeptical still as well. I want to see it in games. Um, next up, they did have some tackling. They had some third and one drills. First team up, Jamal Williams with an easy pickup. Didn't hear a lot about DeAndre Swift today. Um, they had Jamal Williams playing some, te some first team reps. So I don't know if he tweaked something, but I, I, I read a bunch of reports from yesterday's uh, 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 training camp and nothing on Swift. So hopefully he didn't get hurt, but um, I guess we'll see. Um, Jamal Williams had an easy pickup. Uh, first down, play action pass that led to a wide open Hawkinson for an easy 25 yard touchdown. It was a busted coverage. Tracy Walker was the nearest defender though, but don't really know if it was his fault. Um, McNeil and Hutchinson stopped the running back uh, two yards short at the line of scrimmage, so doing a good job on the run as well. Hutchinson's not just a pass rusher, uh, he can play the run. Then the second team came on board. Uh, it was a jet sweep to Khalif Raymond. Easy touchdown. Hughes tripping over uh, uh, Kirby Joseph in the process. Craig Reynolds broke a tackle. 
Um, Sean Deion Hamilton uh, was the victim on that, the linebacker for a first down. And then Josh Woods had a, uh, the other linebacker had a nice stop on Jamar Jefferson, just so, just short of the first down as well. And then they had some goal line work from the one yard line. First team up again, Jamal Williams with a touchdown plunge. Let everybody know to uh, excited about it, screaming, ripping his helmet off. Jamar Jefferson, uh, same thing, touchdown. Uh, and, and then a rollout by Jared Goff. Nobody really open. Good. Def- it was good defense on the play. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. So second team came up next. Uh, Williams scored. He was still in there. Uh, he was stopped at first, but then spun off and uh, made a nice uh, uh, touchdown plunge. And then defensive lineman John Kaminsky got got some penetration, but could not bring down Craig Reynolds um, for the for the first down or the touchdown. I'm I'm not really too sure, but uh, Kaminsky did end up uh, rocking Craig Reynolds really really big yesterday and uh Reynolds was visibly shooken up but took a play off took a couple plays off came back with a vengeance and uh had a couple really nice series um there's a, then there was a counter to, to Jamar Jefferson Akuda was there he hit him at the goal line but Jefferson got in there um offense clearly won these drills uh, for the most part so offense clicking a little bit right now then there was some O-line and D-line one-on-ones Sewell was handling Hutch Um, Hutch didn't uh, uh, stick out really during these drills apparently Um, Sewell got him twice with with two good wins Hutch got him Hutch got him one time from an inside move it's something that Sewell has been getting beat on quite a bit getting into the inside a lot of a lot of the D linemen on this team are 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 rushing inside to Sewell Um, it's it's his weakness right now and it's one of uh, Hutchison's strengths and he's beating Sewell on that part Um, Sewell did have a visible a visible holding call on Hutchinson too as well, um, holding his jersey. So um, there's a couple draws involved in there too, but but Sewell did handle him pretty good um, on that day. Uh, Ragnow and Jackson were the biggest standouts, shutting down Brockers and McNeil. Um, Charles Harris, man, still getting a, he's getting a lot of love. And I've been talking this guy up since last year. Since after the season, I thought he was going to have a really big season this year. Um, because of the new new attacking defense that they're going to do, and he's really tearing it up out there. He's got violent hands and a variety of, of pass rush moves, um, spinning by Skipper, the offensive tackle, and freezing Obina Eze and getting by him, um, even dominating first team drills as well. Tackle for loss and a very good cut and a very good coverage rep too as well. So making uh, uh, Jared Goff think twice about what he wanted to do. Um, it's forcing Goff to like scramble uh, for a short game, so the good good reps by Charles Harris. I, this defense seems to be his, um, and he's embracing it. Um, defensive lineman, like I said, John Kaminsky won all three of his reps during some one on ones. Um, Kaminsky is he's pretty much battling for that first or second D lineman off the bench. Um, that was pretty much Pascal's. Not really. They weren't just going to hand it to Pascal, but. Um, Pascal being injured, you know, this this helps a guy like Kaminsky big time. So um, he's he's trying to fight for that first or second D, D lineman off the bench, and he's he, he's he's been pretty much trending upwards. He doesn't dominate every day, but he's playing well. Then there was a trick play to DJ Chark that was very successful for a big game. Um, team rules can't really give out the details of the of the play itself. So just know that a trick play worked, and uh, you know um, they're going to get creative here. Um, and I talk about that a little bit later. I think uh, rookie James Houston he had a pretty strong day as well. He picked up a tackle for loss and had a really nice move on newcomer Kendall Lamb, the, uh, the offensive tackle that we picked up from the Tennessee Titans. Uh, so yeah, man. Uh, then Cybert he missed two field goals on the day, one at 53 and 46, wide right. Drilled a 42-yarder, though. Uh, Patterson made all three of his field goals. So that's a pretty good kicking battle going on right there. Jared Davis looked bad during some one-on-one drills, especially in the tackling department. Uh, Team drills, he had a tackle for loss, though, on Godwin Igabuke and had an easy pick off Tim Boyle. Uh, Really nice pressure by Sean Dion Hamilton, uh, the linebacker. An absolute awful throw by Boyle. You can see the video. There's video out there of it. Uh, the pressure comes right up the middle from uh, Sean Dion Hamilton. Got uh, Boyle's kind of going backwards, throws off his back foot, 
doesn't even, he's not even looking. Jared Davis is covering nobody. He's, he's literally covering nobody. He's just standing there. He's standing there just looking around, and a ball was thrown right in his arms. Jared Davis with an easy pick. Um, Tim Boyle is absolutely god-awful, by the way. Um, I think we all know this, but he just keeps proving how bad he is. Day in and day out. I don't know what... I, I, I can't see this kid making the team. I just can't see it. I can't see him making the team. Rookie James Mitchell, tight end. Uh, he whiffed on a block, one of those welcome to the NFL moments for him. Intended for Austin Bryant. Bryant got the sack. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, Mitchell's known for his blocking, so he needs to clean that up a little bit too. Malcolm Rodriguez, Josh Woods, and Anthony Pittman all had, all had pretty good days yesterday as well too, so that's good. And then right here I wrote, Blau seems to be ahead of Boyle in the quarterback two race. I just talked about it. Um, I, I don't see how David Blau's going to lose his job here. Um, you know, Friday's going to be a big, a big indicator of this. Um, coming up when they play the, uh, who are they playing? Falcons? They're playing the Falcons in their first preseason game. They're playing the Falcons in the first preseason game. And we're going to see a lot of Blau and Boyle. And I think it's going to be, this is either going to be, they're going to either hand the new silver to Boyle or what? Because I don't think Blau is in any jeopardy of getting cut right now. But Tim Boyle could be one of the first guys cut. Unless they plan on keeping three quarterbacks on the roster. I know there was an article out there by by uh, by um, talking about this. If they're going to keep two or three on the roster. I think having three quarterbacks on the roster is a waste. Just in my opinion, I think it is. Um, and I don't see why they would keep Tim Boyle even on the roster. Like, if you're going to put him on the practice squad, that's fine, too. I don't really care. Uh, but this team's going to have to make a decision on him. He's just been awful. He hasn't he hasn't been getting any better. So, Blau's ahead. Let's, let's leave it at that. The offense is getting very creative this year. I talked about that a little bit, too, as well, with the with the trick plays that I, I really like hearing that. So, Ben Johnson is, is building up this playbook. Justin Jackson, you know, the newly acquired running back we picked up, the guy that played for the Chargers for a few years. He has been impressing. Haven't heard a lot about him, but I finally got a little bit of info on him. Um, I guess his agility is really on point, and he has some quicks. He makes some really nice cuts. He has good vision. He's a good running back. He, he really is. He's not a phenomenal running back or anything like that, but if you're going to... I think he's better than Jamar Jefferson right off the bat. Um, he just has a lot of injuries. He, he could be pushing Craig Reynolds, too. He might even be better than Craig Reynolds. I know Craig Reynolds is a fan favorite, and uh, um, I don't want people getting too upset about that, but Justin Jackson is a decent running back. He was behind some really good running backs in in, uh, in L.A. Chargers, man. Uh, he was behind guys like Austin Eckler, Melvin Gordon, so and he, and he held his own. So um, he's finally getting some love a little bit. Finally, I heard a little bit... Um, about him because it's been kind of quiet on his front, but that's good. Um, Campbell continues to preach that Okuda needs reps. You know, uh, Raymond blew right by him for a score thrown by Blau. CJ Moore was the nearest defender. So when I hear that, you know, Raymond's out there, and then I hear CJ Moore's in there, Okuda's playing on that. That's on the second team. That's the second team. You know, they've been flip-flopping with him and Will Harris going first, second team. So, right there, his second team is getting beat. He hasn't been bad, Okuda. He, he, there, is, there was reports out there that he's been really good. There's reports out there that he's been mediocre. I haven't heard any reports that he's been terrible. I have not heard that. Um, there's been up and downs. There's been really good ravings. Risden says that he's the clear that he's the clear cornerback, too, to Oruwariye. I, I, you know, I don't know where he's getting that info from. Nothing against Jeff Risden, but I'm hearing I'm hearing that it's a full-on camp battle, you know. And I think I've probably repeated this a thousand times. It's a full-on camp battle. Um, him and Will Harris. I guess Okuda is in front of him right now, apparently, but it's still a battle. So so, so Okuda has the edge. Let's just see if he can hold on to it. Um, Hutch did turn 22. Happy birthday, big fella. Uh, Hutch cleans up versus the backups. Um, but he's having it, you know. He's having tough, really good battles versus the starters, winning some, losing some. Um, all in all, just having some, you know. It's going to happen, you know. He's not going to win every single one. He's not going to lose lose every single battle. This is what you. This is how he's going to get better. 
but the backups don't have an answer for him. He's blown by backups, and he's having really good battles versus the starters. Guys like Sewell, guys like Jonah Jackson, you know, uh, Decker. I haven't heard too much. I haven't heard too many things about him and Decker going at it though. Um, I did hear that uh, we're hearing a lot of Sewell. We're hearing we're hearing some Jonah Jackson, but not hearing a ton about Decker yet. Um, I'd like to hear some of that actually. I'm I'm I'm, I'm very curious there to see what would happen um, versus those battles. So um, I'm I'm sure they've been happening. They're just not really reported. Um, Boyle did have a touchdown pass to Tom Kennedy though, so he had something there. I guess it was a duck. It was it was a wounded duck in. Uh, yeah, I guess Boyle knelt on one on one knee like he was duck hunting and he was trying to make light of it. But this guy's literally on the uh, on the outside looking in. Chuck with a Chark with another catch of the day apparently too as well. Uh, he both feet in the in the back of the end zone kept his feet down throw. Real nice throw by Goff, um, Okuda and Deshaun Elliott in coverage, but really nice play by uh, Goff and Chark. Defensive tackle Bruce Hector has continued to impress out there. He's um, he got the blow for a sack, so he he continues to impress whenever his name is called. Uh, then Maurice Alexander, man, the kid we picked up from the Philadelphia Stars, uh, the guy that's an exceptional punt returner, um, continues to impress as a returner um, on special teams and as a wide receiver. Uh, he got on some second team offense yesterday and made a couple really nice catches, I guess. So uh, good for him. Uh, we'll see what happens more with that, but. Um, it looks like he's the clear right now number two punt returner, kick returner behind Khalif Raymond, I think. So I think he's surpassed a couple guys, and he looks like a natural out there. So let's see if he makes a team. I think he still has to do a lot to make this team, but I guess you never know. Barnes, Derek Barnes, you know, our second year our second year uh, uh, rookie had a rough outing uh, uh, yesterday with the number ones, you know. Moving forward and blitzing isn't a problem for him. It's his thing. It's what he does best. But when he gets put in coverage, he's awful. I guess he just, you know, he got scolded by Kelvin Shepard, his linebacker coach, and Aaron and uh, uh, Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator. Dropped back in coverage and just stood there. Didn't go after nobody. Didn't know what to do. Looked kind of lost. And he got absolutely ripped. You know, he, he got ripped apart for it. And uh, it's, it's, it's something he's going to need to improve on it's it's something that i don't know i think dropping back in coverage man as a linebacker i think it's very hard to teach i played linebacker i played linebacker when i played football and it's a it, it, it's a it's a thing that just kind of comes natural it's it's hard to teach it's hard to teach it's hard to coach up you know some guys can do all three blitz play the run cover some guys can just do one or two of the things him dropping back, he played so much D-line in college that I think him becoming a cover linebacker, is it's, it's going to take time. He's a good athlete. He's got the speed to do it, but he's just not good at it. So I think it's going to be a problem come game time. You know, um, I don't, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about him dropping back in coverage. I don't want to see him do it, but he has to learn it. He just has to learn it. And then Evan Brown. You know, the center guard is the clear first reserve lineman off the bench. I think Tommy Kramer, probably that second guy off the bench too. Um, so the number six and number seven lineman, if you want to call those guys, uh, which is good, man. We got some pretty quality backups uh, um, in the offensive line department. I guess Logan Stenberg was awful yesterday, getting beat up, looking terrible. Um, he's another guy that's probably going to get cut too. Um, and then... Um, Kevin Jarvis, you know, the MSU product, he's been getting better too as well, getting getting more reps, looking better on one-on-one -on -one drills. Um, and I'll end it off with an MSU product there. Um, and that's it, man. Uh, kind of a long one, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, but it's that's just the way it goes. I'll try to get more out uh, uh, tomorrow, day 13. You know, today's will be tomorrow's. It's just the way it is right now, guys. Sorry, but uh, that's just uh, how it goes. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the bottom right. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Get, notification bell. Get all my videos. And don't forget to like, comment, and share this, man. Let's talk about it. Day 12 in the books. Boom. Go Lions. One pride, baby.